What's up YouTube? This is Christian Herrera. Uh, this time I will host you without an image and that's because it's too dark in here so you wouldn't see my webcam anyways. So this episode is about installing Manjaro Linux but with using the text-based installer. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because uh, I installed Manjaro Linux for my girlfriend's computer and actually it was a UEFI system but it was a very old laptop but uh, what ended up happening was that uh, it didn't want to boot when I used the when I used the the provided the installer the the install wizard so I had to do a completely uninstall from the from the command line and then it wanted to work. I don't know why it it worked with the command line installer and not the the graphical installer, but that was the case. So this video is for you that uh, are failing to install Manjaro Linux, <coughs> but still want to use it. Uh, so why use Manjaro Linux? Yes, um, in my um, opinion, Manjaro Linux is a good Linux distributions for people that want to use well, well a, be a beginner Linux actually it's a good beginner Linux it has most of the benefits from Arch Linux and the Arch Linux benefits are that it's rolling release and also the AUR the Arch user repository um, the AUR is fantastic it contains a lot of software and what you can't find in the in the official repositories you will actually find it in the AUR so yeah having access to the AUR makes uh, Manjaro Linux quite powerful indeed so, in order to do this video I have uh, prepared a virtual machine here uh, with UEFI so as you can see if I go to the settings here uh, and I go to the the here you can see well it's grayed out now but here you can see in system that I enable the EFI. So now we're booting the install system. I have used the XFCE version of Manjaro. Uh, if you want to download it, you go to the Manjaro webpage, you click on Try Manjaro, and you use here you um, choose the flavor of Manjaro that you want to install. You have the GNOME uh, version, you have the KDE Plasma, and you have the X X XFCE. If you're low on resources, use XFCE. Uh, I haven't used GNOME very much, uh, KDE I've been using for yeah, for, for some time and then I stopped using it and then I using it. Uh, it's, it's a good system if you want everything integrated yeah, because the integration is very good. Uh, <coughs> however, the, the personal information manager it is good the problem is that the K mail is not what it should be so now we are in, in uh, logged in to our live CD and you get welcomed by, the, by this Manjaro hello screen uh, this Manjaro hello screen if you want to launch the normal installer you just click the launch installer and it will start doing the, the whole setup process but I will kill this for now and I will start a terminal emul emulator so here we have it and I start it off by just writing setup <coughs> I have set up a 30 gigabyte uh, virtual disk for this install uh, so it shouldn't have any problems and uh, let's start with the install process 
uh, the install process starts with selecting the install language the language that you have while installing this is not the language of the system that you end up with uh, I will choose English um, in my humble opinion I think that uh, all computing should be done in English I really don't like when uh, you're doing computing in other languages you get uh, some kind of error or some kind of <coughs> some kind of um, or trace back from a compiler and it's or everything is in Swedish or German or a language that's not spoken in the rest of the world it's difficult to copy paste that into a search engine and start searching that way so I prefer to do it in English the knowledge base is so much bigger when you're working in English so let's go through the installer we start with preparing installation we're setting the virtual console um, the key mapping will be US that's okay for me uh, we, let's start by listing the devices and here you can see the 30 gigabyte uh, virtual disk that I have created um, now let's go to the partitioning uh, partitioning is actually a big subject uh, you can partition your disks in many ways uh, a more traditional Unix uh, partition table will be something with a separate home, a separate var, uh, separate boot and uh, and uh, you would use different file systems for different parts of the system. We won't do that today because that's a totally different subject and it's something that will take a lot of time to dive into. So let's go with uh, using this big disk. Uh, now uh, the um, Manjari installer provides you with automatic partitioning that would create an extended four disk and it will create a fat disk for the UEFI data and uh, it will be 300 megs and it will create a, a, a using disk with the rest of the disk and it will be extended four we will do the same actually but since uh, this is more a debugging what you should do if that's not working out for you we will go with the manual partitioning and for that I will actually use uh, fdisk which you know, is a very old partitioner very old uh, program but it's been working well for many years so when you don't be intimidated by, by fdisk because fdisk is actually very helpful uh, M is for listing the menu so as you can see here we have the options we can do on the disk and we will start by creating an uh, empty GPT partition table so let's start with create typing G now it's created we can list I uh, use P to list our partition table and now we will start by creating our EFI partition uh, and we will do it according to the Manjaro Linux way so it will be 300 megabytes so I start by typing P for new partition um, no N for new partition and we will create partition number one and we will use the first sector we won't use any displacement and I will have a factor with plus 300 megabytes so now the partition is created and when I list with P you can see that the partition is created like a Linux file system and that's not what we want we want a EFI partition so we start by typing T for type and we can use the capital L to list and we can see here that uh, for instance if we're creating a swap partition we would use partition type 19 Linux file system is partition type 20 and let's go to the top here and we can see that the EFI system is in partition type 1 so let's type a 1 here not a Q, a 1 here and as you can see it tells us that the partition type was changed from Linux system to EFI system we create our second partition by typing N as in new we accept default and now since we're going to use 
accept the first free sector <coughs> and since we're going to fill the disk we're just going to type enter here and leave it use the default as you can see default is 62 million something and let's go with that and now our partition is done so I will use the uh, extended for partition uh, table on, on this so the Linux file system will be excellent for this we write and quit with the W if we want to quit without writing we use only the Q but now we do write and quit so we write and quit we will do no rating uh, rating is useful if you have multiple disks you're setting up a server you want faster input output or if you need uh, some disk redundancy then you would use some kind of write system uh, logical value management the LVM I was extremely excited when it came out uh, 10 15 years ago because that meant that I could do my my partition tables and I can dynamically uh, change uh, the the partition tables on a live system so for instance if I had too little in the home partition I could extend it if I had too little so I could actually start to swapped at that time we won't use any encryption so let's go to mount our partitions for the install so we omit this whole optional fields in this this would be a, a plain desktop uh, laptop install so uh, we can start the partitioning the mounting the partition what we need to remember is that we shouldn't mount the that this 300 EFI partition that we have here because that will give us an error so we start by mounting our root partition that would be this dev sda2 that's 29.7 gigabytes and we want it to be formatted with extended 4 and here we go and I think the next screen will be the mount options for this disk. Now, <coughs> if you have a um, solid-state drive, you should research which are the mount options that uh, should be used with EXTEND extend 4 and solid-state. But you can do that after the system is installed and you check it out in the uh, ETC FS tab that's where you have the all the mounting data as for now i will just accept this uh, no access time uh, which actually does that it doesn't write a timestamp when you access a file uh, which inc which uh, makes the input output a little better so we accept the default for now we confirm the the act the the mount uh, options and now we let's go by creating a swap file um, a swap file is actually not needed in a modern system but because uh, the modern systems has so much RAM the old recommendation was always to have the double of your RAM size in swap file uh, but for now the swap file is mostly used for hibernation and such because yeah so we have so much RAM but I do I do recommend creating a swap file that is at least the same size as the RAM so let's start by creating a swap file uh, yes one more thing if you use some butter FS you should create a swap file it is not well supported with this uh, copy and write systems so if you're using uh, uh, better FS you should create a swap partition as well but let's use the swap file and it says that it wants to be 392 it actually wants to create the same size as I have allocated for this uh, install which is good but I think it will be a little small because if we use the free command here uh, 
we can see we have 3.8 gigs of of uh, allocated RAM but this is a 4 gigs allocated RAM so it has used 200 megabytes for uh, for running our live system so I will actually go and change this to 4 gigabytes and accept so <clears throat> now when that is done we create we just choose done here because even if you technically would uh, mount the the EFI file system to your Linux uh, uh, Linux system we won't do that manually so what's the next step in the install process tells you where we, we want the UEFI partition and now we choose that one uh, we will stick with the default for this um, I tend to you to mount the EFI directly on boot and make it slightly larger uh, but that's because I use pure Linux systems I don't have a multi boot in any way and uh, if you have put it on boot it will actually reside the data for your bootloader for instance if you're using grub the grub data will be on the on the efi partition if you're using and the kernel will be stored on the efi partition but uh, for now we will use it on boot efi as they suggest on the in the installer but you could as well just uh, put it on the uh, put it as boot So the next step is to configure our installer mirror list and we start by reviewing the Pacman configuration. Uh, we can just scroll it down and we can see that it's not using any weird uh, repositories. It's the core, it's the extra, it's community and multilib. That's exactly what we want. So let's exit that and it will start to synchronize the database of, uh, of the packages the package database the next step is to edit the pacman mid mirror configuration and i find this part really weird because when installing an arch linux like system or something i'm used to actually be able to uncomment the the mirrors that are interesting for me but I can't see them here so I will just exit here uh, we will use the stable branch so I guess that's what this is for but we will use the stable branch and this actually takes a lot of time now because uh, when we rank we use the rank mirrors it will go through all the mirrors that are listed in the uh, in the um, in the default file and it, it will start to check the speed for every mirror that was fast so now we can see here the fastest ranking mirrors uh, according to my location and it was Austria Germany Germany and Holland uh, I will actually scroll down here and use the Swedish server as well since I am in Sweden uh, you could actually run this uh, this uh, rank mirror script from time to time just to make sure that you are always using the fastest mirror so that was that step so the next step is to refresh the the GPG keys for all the developers and uh, this will take some time so well now when this part is done I can sense that I have a lot of editing to do so however now it's time to choose our Pacman cache now this could be a problem because the default and the recommended for from the launcher and the installer is that you, it wants to use the the Pacman cache from the running system. Problem is that this running system is running from the RAM, and uh, it's booted from the uh, from uh, 
a USB disk or a CD. Uh, when I tried to do this before, I actually ran out of memory. So it's better in this case. I don't know if it might have to do with me running this from a virtual machine and using an ISO file. But um, now when it starts to install the stuff, it actually runs out of memory. So we're choosing no here. And let's enable the file system check hook. And then we go back. And now we install the desktop system. Uh, we're going to install uh, J, which gives us access to the user repository. And if you have a laptop that you know have some issues, you can use the long time support the kernel. I will use the latest kernel. And when we go down, you can see they have two real time kernels available as well. One that is Linux 5.9 and one that is 5.4. Uh, the real time kernel has been recommended for, for, for instance, if you're doing a multimedia desktop, uh, want to work with sound files or something similar. But today's computers are so fast, so uh, it's what it is. So now we're going to choose a desktop environment. In this instance, I will actually choose nothing, I think. Or I'll install XFCE so we have something to boot into. And then we type OK. Would I like to add some additional packages? I think that the only thing that I would like from here is actually Vim if I find it here. Now we won't do any additional installs. Uh, then we use the minimal install. Uh, you can use the full install if you wish to, but I will use the minimal since this is uh, just an install video. And let's get out of here. All right, so now we come to the next step. <coughs> uh, now I won't uh, cut this because some stuff happens that were interesting. So I will just do a fast forward, a big speed up on everything. Uh, and you will see a lot of stuff flickering around here on the screen. Um, for you that was wondering, I had a slight problem. Uh, I have a very bad internet connection here and I use my phone for the internet. So actually what happened, it couldn't find the, the latest kernel. So I installed the, the long time support kernel, which is not a problem because uh, since this is a Manjaro system, I can easily uh, ch change the kernel later and download and replace it for the for the for the LTR kernel. But now this is a virtual machine, so it's not important. But if you go into such a problem, uh, don't be afraid to use some other kernel that you prefer kernel because you can always change it later. And uh, as you can see, I was doing some flickering over here. What I was doing, I, I was checking some stuff, and I will give you some short, quick tips here. Uh, if you're doing an install on a system, and if you're not sure that you are in EFI mode or that you have an EFI system, you can check this folder, sys firmware EFI if it was. If it's populated with a lot of stuff, then you are in an EFI system. Uh, I found this by by listing everything that I had in uh, in at etc mtab. mtab actually tells you all the mounted uh, what you have mounted in this in system for now. So I, I do a cat etc f uh, mtab. You can see what's mounted for now, and the fs tab. It's the script that it uses for mounting when you're mounting the the stuff. And I was also checking some other stuff. I I found that it was using UDiski for uh, that this instance was using UDiski for for auto mount of file systems and such. And 
I had used, just uh, used UDSK before, so yeah, I was checking. So that was the flickering. I was just checking, uh, checking out the system. Okay, so if we dump the file system now, we can see that we've been using 32% of the mount MNT. So we're using 32% of our disk now that we have installed the system. Um, so now we will ins auto install drivers. I do recommend using the free drivers. Uh, they are better off than the proprietary drivers. Uh, you should only use the proprietary drivers if you have um, a, a graphics card and you need it for gaming or something. But uh, <coughs> I, I am using. Uh, I find that the free drivers are often better than the proprietary drivers. So let's auto install the free drivers. That's what I recommend. If you want to do the proprietary, it's up to you. Well, it seems like it's going to be a lot of speeding up in this video to do. So I am considering downloading the Benny Hill theme song, but I guess I'm getting copyrighted for that. So let's continue with the next step. So now we're going to install the bootloader. As I said, if you mounted your EFI system in the boot directory, this would be installed to your boot directory. Now, Grub is always a safe choice, and if you're going to do a multi-boot system, I highly recommend Grub. But since I'm doing a system that is uh, pure Linux, I'm going to try the system D-boot. And now we configure the base system. Now, we have to generate the FS tab, and I was telling you before, the FS tab is the file that tells you where everything gets mounted. So, actually, I prefer to use uh, something that uses UUID. Uh, you shouldn't use device name or device labels. So, let's do this by using the UEFI part UUID. The host name will be Manja Virtual. Virtual Manjaro, and this will, will probably be saved in the the etc hosts file. System locale. Um, I will choose uh, U English UTF-8 for this. And the desktop keyboard layout, I will use. I think I'll use uh, Swedish keyboard for this one. Time zone, uh, I'm going to use Europe. Stockholm and since this is a pure Linux system I'm going to use universal time universal time if you share this computer with a Windows installation you should use the local time else they will start uh, uh, fighting each other I set the root password and then we add a new user, we call this Manjaro and we're going to use the bash shell for this one and let's set the password for this user so now we're going to go to the next and I won't enable automatic login. I don't find it useful if you actually get your computer stolen or whatever. It's not good. But since we created the, um, the swap file the same size as the RAM, we can actually enable the hibernation uh, support, which I highly recommend if you're using a laptop. 
<coughs> later you can actually configure the system so it will hibernate when you close the lid or, or some similar stuff so when you're moving your computer be between different parts instead of it just going to sleep and still running on batteries it actually saves your whole session to the to the swap file so when you open the computer again it will uh, be where you were so let's see here I won't change anything here but the swap configuration as I said a swap in, a, in 10 would be kind of okay because that it won't, it won't, sw won't swap so much to a swap file um, and the preload you can ac access if you want and let's go back and, uh, well let's activate the preload just for fun the preloading actually learns the behavior of the programs you use a lot and it preloads it to the to the RAM to the RAM when you start in the computer so let's I find that we are done and uh, let's review the, the the configuration files it's not much to be reviewed actually as here you can see our how it's mounting the system the host name virtual manjaro so it looks okay so let's go back and now we can sh uh, choose to shoot into the installation hi this is future christian here uh, while editing i noticed that i did a huge mistake uh, you actually need to uh, log into the shrouded system and install your bootloader uh, now um, i tried to use the system d uh, boot which is the formerly known as gummy boot um, i could get it to work but for this tutorial that it's aimed to someone that just need to get stuff running I preferred to change it later to uh, uh, grab which is easier to get installed and easier to get working so we'll come to that later in the video okay I'm back um, actually I will abandon the system D boot and we will go with the grab route so I booted into my system I did mount it again and I'm running the installer so let's install the group the grab boot G U R uh, the group because it's a much simpler bootloader to get working I actually needed to do some custom configuration of the system D boot I would do it on Arch Linux but not on not just for doing this video so let's go to the arch wiki let's search for well so now we're installing the bootloader into the system and we are using the command grub install uh, and we're using the target for the system which is a 64-bit system and we're using the directory of the boot EFI where we mounted the EFI partition after that we have to generate our we have to generate our our configuration and you can do that with the grab make config command and we want to write it so we will have an output file that is boot grab and it will be grab dot cfg I think it is so now let's review the the file And as we should see our 
kernels being listed here and they are it's the boot vm linux and such so that's okay so that's working as it should so now i should be able to reboot the system into the newly installed manjaro system so let's try it let's do an exit let's do a foreground to get back to that and we go to done this seems to work it's reading from um, dev sda2 as it should and look at this now we have a newly installed manjaro system we have our user manjaro and I type in the super secret password I created in the beginning and here we are in a new freshly installed Manjaro system so the first steps you get here uh, Manjaro is actually so friendly that they give you this hello screen let's see here and here it is which gives you the first steps in what to do when you install Manjaro you can go to this application screen and here you can look for software like different browsers and uh, email clients and, and such and it also sh shows you which are installed or not however I do encourage you to um, start using the the console based uh, installer uh, to use Pac-Man and to use the AUR because uh, when you are searching for help on the internet and you run across people that using Arch Linux or using anything else everybody's using the console based installers and they won't give you the instructions for the for the GUI based and actually the GUI based uh, installers are only uh, front ends for the back end for AUR and Pac-Man so this is editing Christian here uh, as I was a little tired yesterday evening when I was uh, recording the last part uh, I'm doing this today with a, a little more energy and uh, I have to start my work day now however uh, I hope you find this type of content useful uh, I am planning to do um, some explainer videos, uh, some things like ex what explains the HTTP protocol, explaining videos on what happens when you browse in a web page or something similar. I mean, more of the educational type of contents. So if you like what I do, if you want to support me in any way, please uh, like, share, comment, subscribe, all of those things because that will help me getting up in the in the algorithm and it actually gives me more uh, motivation to keep doing these videos because if i know that i'm helping someone and if i know that someone finds this useful and uh, i'm actually getting someone to teach them teach them something about technology and where it comes from it would be very rewarding for me to see that and that would give me motivation to keep doing this okay guys have a nice day now i'm off to start my working day bye